Say it ain't so, Joe. Zero inflation? Come on, man. Inflation hasn't even started. Brandon Gentile here. Scary AF. The inflation hasn't even set in yet. That's the insane part. That's the crazy part that's going on right now. You're seeing eight prints, nine prints, nine plus. You're seeing 10 in Europe. Hasn't even started yet. That's that's the craziness. That's what we're heading into. I don't think people even realize the inflation we're about to head into in the coming years here. We just look at the Weimar Republic, the rate of change in inflation, the insaneness before they went into their hyperinflation. The next 10 years are going to be fascinating. And we have a way to predict the future here that we're going to show you. So watch and see as we go through this to see how you can kind of predict the future here and position yourself appropriately. As you can see below, the velocity, the movement of the currency is through the floor here. And a lot of these are from Mike Maloney. Uh, he was shared these in a, re a video recently, which he's one of the most phenomenal monetary uh, historians and educators that there is, flat out. The red line shows the movement of money versus the movement of, or the amount of currency in circulation. So the amount of currency divided by the rate of the currency is moving. So GDP is just money currency, I should say, changing hands, the number of times a dollar changes hands. That's all it is. It's the dollar amount times the the changing of hands. That that's all that's all it is. So red line is velocity on its own showing the cratering. Uh, th again, this is just the velocity itself. And then the blue line, like we said, is the the M2, the currency supply divided by the GDP, the the velocity. So the amount of currency divided by the velocity. So again, showing you just how crazy everything is. Here is the uh, Mike Malone showing the amount of cash in people's accounts. This is what's truly, truly insane as well. And again, I thought no one had any cash. The middle class and the poor are being squeezed, but there's still a ton of cash waiting to come out once the storm clears and the Fed pivot, pivots and goes risk on. Risk on meaning, hey, we're back in stocks, we're out of bonds, we're back in stocks, back in Bitcoin, uh, you know, we're back into things that are generally riskier. Uh, so that's that's what that is, and we're seeing the amount of currency in people's deposit or in their accounts right now, and that's insane. And in, in historically, what it's been, the just the, the top one percent are up 111x in the last 14 years, by the way, since the last crash. So unless you've gone up 111x, uh, you're not doing as well as the one percent. And, and really, generally, they've all just been in assets, and that's where most people below that one percent or below that 95, 90 percent don't have as many assets. They don't have the assets at all. I think like the bottom 50% really don't have any assets. That's why they get crushed by inflation. They're going to get crushed even more because they just hold dollars. They try to live day to day. Um, and, and I did a podcast the other day uh, with Ron Sneller and, and, and he is in financial services. When we were talking about what you can do to increase your income and then decrease your expenses. If you can decrease by 200, get rid of some of the, the ridiculous things we have, which we all have, or we can get rid of uh, 200 bucks of, of subscriptions or whatever, and then we can increase by 200. Maybe we're buying some stuff at garage sales and flipping it on eBay, uh, like Gary Vaynerchuk talks about, and you have that $400 there. Can you imagine putting that $400 into Bitcoin and letting it sit there for 10 years? That's We've done posts and vlogs this week about what Bitcoin will look like if you're putting your, your parts of your retirement into Bitcoin in a, a, a savings vehicle, an appreciating savings vehicle, uh, or a hard asset like that versus a, holding a depreciating dollar. It's going to be magnified, you know, 10, 100, 200, 500 X over the next 10, 20 years. That's the difference. And that right there is the difference between having nothing in retirement, which is what a lot of people are about to deal with and are dealing with right now versus being financially free at, in retirement. So again, this is what the bond market thinks is going to happen. We're talking about protect, predicting the future a little bit. This is what the bond market thinks is going to happen and how we can tell the future. The bond market is betting that there was one more rate hike of about 50 to 75 basis points or half a percent uh, to 0.75 percent. And then the Fed, Fed will have to pivot and start dropping rates. So you can see here toward the end of the year, they, they got up to this point last time, I believe it was 2018, 2019, and they had to start coming back down and pivoting. So it's the same thing. They really can't get up past the Fed funds at rate, can't get up past that, that two-year uh, treasury mark or what that was what it was last time, which I believe was about 3.25, 3.5. And so now the Fed is looking like they're going to do the same thing. This is what the market is saying. And they're saying, hey, the rates are going to have to start coming back down going forward. And this really hasn't changed much. This is still the same thing. That's all you can kind of predict the future and say, hey, there's, there's going to be a recession in the future. We got an inverted yield curve predicting a recession in, in the very near future, in the next six to 12 months. 
We cannot be certain, like we said before, but this is very bullish for assets like stocks and Bitcoin and real estate prices. And this is where it gets you know, crazy. Again, going forward, the rest of this, this article here. However, this also means more inflation, at least asset price inflation. This is important because this is what they want to do, which is financial repression, which we're going to get into here in a little bit. Biden said there was zero inflation. Really? The Biden administration sneakily told you a half-truth about inflation. The inflation rate from month to month went down or uh, went down a touch or even stayed even, depending on the data you're looking at. So they claimed that inflation was zero. This is not how everyone comes to define inflation, though. This is not what we use month to month. So it's just a little bit of a sleight of hand to confuse people and make things look better than they are. Kind of like trying to redefine how they determine what a recession is, as we saw in the last month. When government sucks, they just refine, redefine life for you. George Orwell, 1984, Brave New World, they talked about that. Gaslighting you, redefining words, changing the vocabulary, changing the language to make government look better. Because they know you aren't smart enough to figure it out on your own. This happens with all government. This is not specific to this administration. Some might be more egregious than others, but they all suck. They all suck. We are always looking at the Consumer Price Index, CPI, from year over year, not month to month. And that was ex still extremely high. It was 8.5% year over year. And this is what we generally, what you always hear things generally, except this past month. That's what you are looking at. That's what the number that comes out all the time. So it's still up a ton. And as you're going to see in a second, it's even more than that. So here's the part from the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, talking about this. And there's the actual you know, little write-up about it. What's insane is that this is not even the real inflation number. We had talked many times before what the real inflation rate is and how it's based off of. And it used to be based off of something completely differently in 1980 until we stripped this whole basket down and neutered it. True inflation, though, if you take John Williams at Shadow Stats, does it still and tracks this stuff, which he's got some incredible stuff tracking how he used to actually do things. True inflation, found below, is really about around 18%. That sounds a little bit more like what we're seeing in our everyday life with the food prices and car prices, all the things we're seeing in our life that we actually buy and use energy, food, you know, water. Yeah, that sounds a little more accurate. So we can see the actual 1980 version they changed here to make things look better. Well, we've had a lot more inflation in, in the last 40 years than people even realize. This is the government's CP lie, as Mike Maloney says down here. Russia and China dump the dollar. This could be another catalyst for more inflation as Russia and China leave the dollar and pick up real assets, gold, Bitcoin, commodities. They dump the dollar, which will make their way back to the U.S. and drive up the currency pool. So there's more currency now in circulation. As they're exiting that dollar, it's got to come somewhere and it's going to come back to the U.S., the chickens coming home to roost. So prices will have to act like a sponge and soak up all those extra currency units. Again, increasing inflation. This has been happening slowly over the past 14 years since the great financial crisis, but now it's really starting to speed up and increase. And again, here's Mike Maloney showing this, the, the slow decline over the last 10 years of China and Russia and getting rid of the dollar out of their reserves and increasing their gold supply. They've been buying gold hand over fist in the last 10, 12 years in the background, trying not to really spook anything. So they're slowly decreasing their dollars and slowly increasing their gold purchases. And now that's, you know, they're talking about Bitcoin and Putin is talking about Bitcoin. And, you know, I, I'm sure these central banks, I'm sure a lot of them, governments are accumulating slowly, silently in the background, but it's, it's, it's hard to tell what's actually being done. Uh, the IMF telegraphs their past. Financial repression is the way governments across the world will try to get out of this mess. And we talked about looking at the markets, where the bond market thinks we're going to be, and they're going to pivot in the next month or two, and then rates will start coming down up, up, in the, up top here. This is what we talked about here. And how to, you know, we, again, we said, look at how much currency still has to come out into the, the markets. Like, I, I thought all the people had no cash, but apparently they do. There's still a lot out in hiding, and it's going to come out when people are ready when the storm clears, like we said, the middle class and poor are being squeezed. But once the storm clears, once the public thinks the storm's cleared and the Fed probably pivots around that time, then it goes boom. And then, then what? Then we have crazy inflation even more. So again, predicting that. But here, again, this is another way we know which direction governments are going to go. Because IMF, Ben Bernanke, our Fed chairman from you know the great financial crisis in the 2000s, talking about deflation. It cannot happen here. So you, Inflation is a tax on human beings, silent tax, but it also stifles create creativity, creation, uh, just production, productivity. It stifles all that. And that's what they want. They do not want that because they want to crush the middle class. That's the point. That's why 
big box retail retailers were open and all the little guys were stopped during the last two years. They had gates and chains over the aisles uh, and boarded up stores for the little guy. But yet the big store is totally fine because they want to crush the small, the small business. I mean, if someone else has another explanation for that, then please let me know as to why only the big guys were allowed to stay open, but the little guys weren't. Uh, and then you put on the IRS agents that are coming out and them wanting to audit and all the tax increases that are coming for the middle, for the middle and lower class. Why is that? I, I thought we were for the little guy. I thought the, the generally the globalist Democrat party was for the little guy, but they're not. They've been, they've been usurped by the globalists have taken over the party. So now it's all about crushing small business in the Western way of life, capitalism, which, you know, we have crony capitalism. Now we don't really have true capitalism. We haven't since 1913 as we've talked about a lot, since we have manipulated interest rates, we don't have a free market anymore. So now it's just getting more crony and more crony over time. So now this is what we're left with. But coming back to this, before we go on, on too many tangents, IMF working paper, the liquidation of government debt from January 2015. And again, high public debt often re produces a drama of default and restructuring. But debt is also reduced through financial repression, through financial repression, through financial repression. It's not a term you're not going to hear much in the media. You're not going to hear that anywhere, but this is them. This is the, the bank of banks, basically. The bank of international settlements is up top. Then you've got these guys, basically. And then you've got the central banks. You know, you've got the Bank of Japan. You've got the uh, Federal Reserve. You've got the ECB, European Central Bank. So this is these guys, these guys at the top, and they're telling you this is a way to do it. A tax on bondholders, which is financial repression, and savers via negative or below market real interest rates. Like we've said, when inflation is super high, say 10%, and you're only getting 1% on your dollars or your, your currency sitting in a bank, you're negative 9%, so a negative real rate. So they're gonna slowly boil the pot that the bondholders and the savers of the currency are in and hope they don't notice, hope they don't flee. Because what happens if every, they all flee? If they flee, then the price of those bonds goes down and the yields go up. So now interest rates are going through the roof, now the government can't service its debt, now no one can service their debts. It's you know, like a variable rate. It's just moving and moving and moving up and up and up and no one can service things and the economy collapses. The global economy will, will collapse. So they don't want to spook it. That's why they, they move slowly. They don't jar things too much usually because they're on tilt. I mean, it's just, it's a high wire act. So they're trying to, to really be careful uh, of how they do this. But this is the plan. And this is how you know you have to be in assets. You cannot be in dollars long-term. You know, maybe the living expenses, three months, six months, you know, whatever, maybe 12 months. But everything else has to be in assets. It has to be in real estate, Bitcoin, some gold and silver, commodities, lumber, corn, wheat. You have to be in actual things of value, primary assets, not tertiary assets. So again, after World War II, capital controls and regulatory restrictions created a captive audience for government debt, limiting tax-based erosion. Financial repression is most successful in liquidating debt when accompanied by inflation. For the advanced economies, real interest rates were negative half the time during 1945 to 1980. Average annual interest expense savings for a 12 country sample range from about 1 to 5% of GDP for the full period. We suggest that once again, financial repression may be part of the toolkit deployed to cope with the most recent surge in public debt in advanced economies. So make that what you will. I mean, this is what they're doing already, what they've been doing, and then they're out and out saying it. So this is why when I say a lot, like, hey, this is not from my words. These are just the things I study. I mean, whether it's Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, or it's the governments or the central bank, they're telling you. I mean, this is not, this stuff is not uh, hard to find. It's, it's out there. They're doing videos. They're doing reports on it. They're doing these things and telling you what's going to happen. So if you can position yourself in the right trades long term, again, I'm not a day trader. I'm not a swing trader. I don't, I don't trade month to month. I don't trade day to day. I want to position myself. Is that all the time? I've got family. I've got businesses. I don't have time to sit there and try to day trade. I want to position myself for five to 10 year spans, you know, minimum. And whether it's in real estate and we're buying apartment complexes or buying self storage or, you know, doing that, or we're, I'm buying Bitcoin, you are buying food storage, preparing for things, insurance payouts, right? We're buying gold and silver. We want to be positioned for that long term trend to play out because I know what's going to happen. I, I'm, I know. I don't know exactly when. None of us know when these things are going to happen, but I know they're going to happen. So I want to be positioned properly. And then the iceberg flips and then those things pay off. And then now the market's crushed. Now general real estate's crushed, stocks are crushed, and we can pour those insurance payouts into very cheap assets. Don't worry, the government is here to help. 
They're hiring agents to audit and take every single dollar from you. Like we said earlier, it's, they, they say they're going for the big guy, but yet we have charts. We have, the, again, the things they're saying are very different from the actions they're taking. We have to peel the layers back, the onion layers, you know, a layer or two. We can see they're actually taxing everyone. They're taxing all different uh, income levels, and they want to take every single dollar from you. They want to audit you. They want to bend you over the barrel. They want the middle class gone because we need the 1% and then we want everyone else poor. That's globalist. That's Marxism. That's Fabian society. This is not, these are not my words. These are the people in power. This is what they've been saying for decades. So this is what they want. And then when you have that lens and you can see it through that perspective, all this stuff makes sense. That's why you get 87,000 new IRS agents. They want to make your life a living hell. If that's the average person, it doesn't make any sense. We're like, why, what is going on? Why are they training them to be, you know, violent and, and, you know, with, with weapons and stuff and, because they are coming after small businesses. They're coming after the middle class. They're, they know people are going to not be happy. This is just history playing out over and over again. And again, this is what happens when you let government get out of control too big and too centralized. Point is, we need to stay alert. This is the point. Stay alert, prepare. Prepare with things like this. Share with your family. Please share with your friends. Share with people who are already prepared maybe, but more importantly, people that aren't prepared and that you think need to prepare more, please share this with them and get the word out. Point is we need to stay alert and prepare. We have been talking about this for a while. Buy food storage, water, Bitcoin, gold, silver, energy sources, energy sources, security, etc. and community. Community is the biggest thing. I say down here, build community, take care of each other. We need each other more than ever. Community is the number one thing in a survival situation, believe it or not. Stick close and arm yourself. Arm yourself with the skills and information we need. Stay strong. The good guys win in the end. That's the great news. So we know that already playing from victory, coming from victory. So appreciate you. Please share, like I said, with someone. Please like and subscribe. Please let us know if there's something you didn't like that you don't like. Here's the, here's the IRS. You know, we're texting billionaires. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we're careening off the highway at 80 miles an hour on two wheels. Nope, we're coming after the little guy. Taxing $600 in Venmo. It used to be $10,000. should be 100000 with inflation. When they did it years ago, why do we even have it? Why is it going down instead of up? It should be at, I think it's like $75,000. So $10,000 then, this is $75,000 now uh, from whatever it was 50, 50 years ago. So now, why are we not increasing it? No, we're decreasing it because they want to squeeze a little guy. That's why. It's, so use the IRS on two wheels. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for the time and energy. It's the most important asset we have. So thank you for spending it here. And like I said, if you didn't like it, let me know. Dislike it. Let me uh, have the feedback so I can improve, get better. We can provide you a better product. Thank you. We'll see you on the next one.